Hey everyone, welcome to a very special edition of The Daily. Today is Monday, May 24th. I'm Greg Lawless and I'm joined today by all the folks from Fox Football Phone and Eric Winalda, Temris Lane, and Nick Webster. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. You are actually our very first special guest we've ever had, so this will go down in history in some way. So, we uh, just have to be special now. Well, okay, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So, uh, we want to talk obviously about the Champions League. Eric, you were over in uh, Madrid for yeah. this game, joined by LA coach uh, Bruce Arena on that one. That yeah, was fun, actually, yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about the game, the experience, the stadium, everything. Well, everybody was so worried about this game being a dud, and, and it, there's still people that have mixed you know, feelings about what kind of game it was. I thought it was fantastic. I really did. The atmosphere at, at the Bernabeu was unbelievable. I mean, you, I've been in a couple World Cups, but I've never seen anything like that. And uh, once the game started, I, I think there was a little bit of worry, because at first 15, 20 minutes, we thought, oh, there's just going to be a defensive battle. But once the game opened up, it was fantastic. And, and you know... You can say whatever you want about Mourinho, but he's, his destiny was on his side, and now he's, he's everything that, that the guy t touches is gold. He's fantastic. It's pretty amazing. And Diego Milito, obviously, is a superstar. I mean, the guy's everyone kind of questioned maybe, you know, was he going to be the man for Argentina? Is he now going to be the guy up top that starts? There's a new Diego in Argentina. It's the like Diego Milito. I, I, I think this guy flew under the radar most of the year. I mean, Nick covers a lot of the uh, Serie A. But... Um, this is a guy that's proven to me, I think, to everybody in the world that uh, it's time to start putting him at a, maybe an, another tier up as far as the, the well, best. Well, you look at the two teams, and you know, Muller had his chance, didn't finish. Melito, two chances, clinical, and and that was the difference between the two teams when you when you really break it down. Yeah, I think clinical is a great word. He was so precise with his movement, and then on the shot itself. But he didn't panic. Right. It was it was, it was yeah. it, there was no, there, there's so much poise in that guy to get in those spots. And most players they they kind of hit that panic button. He even did that little hesitation to make butt go down on his butt, and then he just you know found the found the back of that. It was fantastic. Well, you look at the quality of goals he scored all season long. I mean, I think he's he's a striker that can score every type of goal you know the scrappy goals the spectacular goals and uh sure and for Inter milan i mean he, he was outstanding all year and i think he was one of the, the best signings that Mourinho made you know he's, he scored a lot of goals for genoa came to Inter milan didn't miss a beat yeah, that's the other thing about what Inter has pulled off with it. a fairly old team it's a team that was designed just to win yeah. in the short term i mean they got lucio for for six million i mean look at that i think that paid off as well i mean it's schneider for me is the best signing. Uh, for Schneider to go back to Bernabeu and just kind of, you know. Oh, that's got to be fun. Put nose at everybody. Well, else. it would have been interesting if, because it, it looked like it was going to be a battle between the Dutchmen, you know, because Robin was also another right. throwaway. So, uh, but Schneider was definitely uh, uh, proven his point on the night. Well, we're, we've moved on a little bit to the World Cup. We touched on it. So let's stay with Argentina, in fact. Uh, is Argentina going to be able to do anything? Is this something that they can, I mean, because on that field, you look at the Inter squad, Zanetti and Cambiasso, not with Argentina. Right. Milito with Argentina. Where, where does this leave Argentina in the World Cup? Some of the decision-making by Diego Maradona really it boggles the mind. I mean, the fact that he's taken Martin Palermo, who's you know, 36 years of age, has played one game for Argentina in the last 10 years. I mean, it seems like the, the squad is stacked with his friends. You know, you're leaving Raquel May at home, Cambiasso, Zanetti. I mean, these are three players that would walk into any national team on the planet, even Brazil. Wow. And they are not playing. <laughs> well, Brazil and Argentina are the two teams that have some serious omissions this year. But you know, if you talk about Ar Argentina, they're probably still going to be a factor in this World Cup. Uh, the U.S. is going to make their announcement uh, later this week, probably on their roster. Right. Right? <laughs> there are going to probably be some omissions there. Uh, who are we thinking that, that may not make it? And uh, what are you thinking about these games that are coming up this week? What do you think? Because I know you want to chime in here. I know. Uh, well, in terms of who's not going to make the roster? Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be a tough call. I mean, they're going to have to choose between the, the forwards, yeah. Finley's. I mean, uh, do you think Finley and and Buttle will go? No, I'm I'm actually in favor of. Um, I like Buttle's form. I think he's strong. I think he's learned a lot in the last couple of years. I think the, the he's bounced around a little bit. He's gone through from a lot of adversity, but he's found himself at the right time. You know, I, I got to spend a little time with Bruce. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, tomorrow's like the deciding factor. It's, big, right? it's, it's yeah. a big test, but I, I still think I still think you got to go with the guys that are in form now. And, and, and then, for, for me, yeah. Buttle is a guy that can win a game for us. So, so, I mean, is Eddie Johnson considered in form? You know what? That, he's such a, a riddle. And, and, and it, the hard part about uh, that is, you know, we did see him you know, get stretchered off a couple of weeks back. And, and anything that, that could trip that kid up um, or get inside his mind, for me, uh, I just don't want him to have any distractions whatsoever. I, for my money, it's Buttle right now. 
So uh, these two games that are coming up this week, the, the pre-World Cup games, Bob Bradley's talked about it, that he's going to be looking at the fringe players on Tuesday and then probably on Saturday more about getting his team, his core group together. What is he looking for in these games, especially the Tuesday game, especially? Just how they handle themselves in the little small moments, you know, because the, the, in these kind of games... Don't it, you think it, they'll leave out the players that are definitely going, the Donovans, the Dempsey's? No, they, they've got to figure out how they're going to be able together. to mesh together. But, and, and that's where an experienced player or a veteran player kind of has to, to kind of, you know, prove his salt, as, as that's Bob's little saying, prove his salt. He always likes to say that. But it's not really about the combination anymore. It's about who's going to be able to play under this kind of pressure. Who's going to be the guys that are going to be able to handle it? Right. And you're going to find... The fact that you know there's this big sigh of relief when you finally make the team, but this this little part right here is sometimes the hardest part, and you find out your true colors is before it, the game is even Is it get. different for England though, because they're playing Mexico today, and they have you know one of their big friendlies, so it's kind of a bigger game, I guess. What are they looking for? Well, I think <coughs> Capello is just trying to nail down, uh, much like Bradley, the, the 23 who are going to go. You know, you, you've got the the seven fringe players who are in the squad right now. I think both Capello and Bradley have an idea of. 20, 21 players. I think there's two spots available on each team, and whoever whoever steps up. I mean, s some guy goes out today and scores a hat trick for the for the U.S. Boom, he's gonna, he's going to make the flame. So hat trick, Josie Altidore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's already, he's already. You know. And now on the other side of the coin, you know, you got players who desperately don't want to get hurt, and right. already, you know, Ferdinand's come out this morning. They're making a big stink about the Wembley pitch because there's been so many problems with it. And I, th I think some of the players uh, are not going to be going 50%. And as Eric will tell you, if you're not going 100% in the game, that's when you do get hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, you're wearing your England shirt. Of course. I'm very proudly wearing your England shirt. Just, just to We've been dealing with this all year. <laughs> and it's, it's only going to get worse. Are, are you going to feel like any sort of a traitor, considering where you live, where you work, and all of that, when you root for England on, ju on June 12th? Not one hesitation, not one moment. You know, I mean... You know, supporting England, though, it, it's agony. At, le at least you guys, you have your expectations. If you get to the quarterfinals, you're happy. Our expectations is to, to win every competition we go for, and we consistently fail. Right, that's why you live in, that's why you're miserable people. <laughs> it's such a smart country. You think you just adjust your expectations. And I, I think, you know, hopefully, you know, we put a lot of pressure and a lot of stock in, in what Fabio Capello is capable of doing. And um, you, look at, you look at our team, and they're the right age this time, you know. You've got 28, 29, 30-year-old players, and Rooney, if he comes back to the kind of form that he was in two months ago, then you've got a serious team. Well, you want us, but you want the U.S. and England to both get of out course. of the Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see the U.S. advance, because the, the further the U.S. goes in the World Cup, the better it is for all yeah. of us. But, but what about that game? What okay. do you want to see that game? I, I, I want to see a I'm convincing spanking yeah, so I can just <laughs> rub Ronaldo's <laughs> nose in it for the next four years. The, the reality is, is that the expectation is that England should win the game, right? Should so, and, and to them, <coughs> nothing less than a victory would, would be. The only win-win here for everybody is a 1-1 or a 2-2. That, and, and but is that a win for England? That's not a win for England. I, I, think, I, th I think they're not going to you know, you know, shoot themselves in the head if they get a 1-1. But if they lose to the Americans, we're and dealing with now. Yeah. Now it's going to be the best year of my life, life dealing with Nick Webster <laughs> every day. <laughs> we're not, we're not Good morning, buddy. How, how you doing? Do you remember this? You lost like eight days ago. You remember 852 no, days ago? <laughs> the first game of the World Cup is that you can't lose it. A tie is not a disaster, and we've we've seen I've seen England in the last three World Cups, and they go in there and they, they stink it up in the first game, but they never lose that first game. Well, I mean, they, you go, historically speaking, I mean, even teams like make it to the final. Argentina, you know, way back when loses to uh, uh, Cameron, was Cameron yeah. straight off the boat, and they still make it to the final. It can happen. Italy was is is, is famous for being a slow starter. I'm a, I'm hoping Italy, I mean, uh, England slow start against the Americans. We get off on the right foot. I, I actually am not afraid of England at, at all for the United States. We shouldn't point. be. I'm you guys, are, you guys really, all. you're out I, of your I, mind. I, 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 I mean, I'm on. seriously, look at your start. 200 years look ago, we got them both to get away from them. Exactly. And they followed yeah, Tim, Tim so Howard, right. Landon Donovan, so Clint Dempsey, they're your star players. And then you're about as it's deep England. as a thimble from England. It's a little island with cobblestone streets and a queen. I mean, what's there to be afraid of? We were just talking about Jay Demerit, who can't see a ball from 10 yards away. What's he going to do when Rooney's fly. flying by? He's going to do what he always does when Rooney flies by. He's going to kick him. Why? <laughs> it's a simple, simple thing. I mean, it doesn't really It's a simple game. The ball gets past you or the man gets past you, but not both. Uh -huh. at the same exactly. That's it. We can figure that much out. Well, let's move on to MLS because there's a great storyline this week with uh, two undefeated teams, Los Angeles Galaxy and the Columbus Crew. They face off on Saturday in Columbus. 
Uh, obviously, the Galaxy, look, they've allowed two goals in 10 games. They've scored 16. Depending on whether Buttle goes to South Africa or not, they mm -hmm. might have him back. They Most still likely. McGee, so there are. What? Yeah, they still have McGee. Right. Right. So there's that. Uh, but Columbus on a roll as well. Two road wins this past weekend. And uh, who do you see coming out on top this one? I'm, I'm going to go with Los Angeles. I'm I, go and with Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah, they've they've proven that they can no, win without them. them. No, Columbus, they've proved Columbus they've won two schools. games without both of them. They have. They'll be fine. They have, but they haven't yeah. played the quality of That's Columbus right. yet. Look, I, I here, here's the thing, and the, and this is kind of I've spent the whole week with well not well a couple of days with Bruce Arena, and and the, he he knows how to prepare a team defensively. We saw that last year. He had to get the foundation figured out. Once he's gotten to the point where it, he's hard to score on, then he can start playing. Right. So he he's going to go into Columbus with a good plan. He'll frustrate his opponent, and, and if it really comes down to whether there's, uh, so they put nice, away their chances. So you're, you're expecting some nice, boring soccer from <laughs> L.A., is what you're saying. Frustrate well, your opponent I actually, is a euphemism code, right? code for yeah. boring. Well, <laughs> well what, what about this new kid? I, I think that... Uh, Tristan Bowen. Yeah, he's not boring, it's Bowen. No, I, no. I, like <laughs> it. I like this kid. I've, I've been talking about him since, uh, since January. I was really excited to see him uh, get the opportunity to play uh, with some of the, the bigger names out. Um, this is a kid to watch. This is, I, I, I really think that this is a, a kid that's about ready to, to, to really bloom. And, you know, he, he's, he's fast enough. He can get down the wing. And poor Bruce. I mean, every, everybody in Madrid, go, how do you do without, you know, Beckham? And he's like, I'm doing just fine without him. So it, it's, it's, I believe in Bruce. I think, I think he's a good coach. I think he'll figure it out. I think it's going to be a great game regardless. Uh, certainly one to watch. And another thing to watch, of course, tonight. Fox Football phone in live Smith. from the legendary Nevada mm -hmm. Smiths in New York City. You're going to have a bunch of guests. Uh, Andy Gray is coming on. Who else is coming on? Uh, we got a, uh, he's, he's known as Cho John Paul Angel, right? John yeah. Paul Angel. <laughs> <laughs> JPA, Juan Pablo Angel, uh, Jack Bell, who's got the great blog for the New York Times, and uh, Peter Mellor, and that's a name a lot of people don't know, but he actually played in the FA Cup final in 1975 for Fulham. Right. Teammate of Bobby Moore, who coincidentally lifted the World Cup in 1966. Remember that one? <laughs> I had to get it in. No, they yeah, took a on. shot, <laughs> and then the ball. And we, we still can't figure out if it went in or not. So we, no, we figured it out. It didn't go in. No, it didn't go in. Out. So I mean, it's it's goal line <laughs> that's technology. What, that's you're, what you're Russian you're linesmen are for, right? <laughs> right. You didn't really win, but you can have that little star on your jersey. Thank you. That's See, that's that's Brian that's a World Cup, right? Yeah. Oh, is that what that star is That's right, World Cup. You'll get one of them one day. Yes. Probably before you guys get another one. Well, thanks very much for joining us uh, today on The Daily, guys. And uh, be sure to check out Fox Football Phone In on Fox Soccer Channel. And also check out a special on Temrace Lane here on MLSsoccer.com. That's it for The Daily. We'll talk to you tomorrow.